Okay, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, you're definitely starting to get some good dimension in your drawing. I think that areas that are looking pretty good at this point are, is right through here. And then I think your uh, sofa is really starting to develop nicely too. Um, okay, so this is your light source. So that's a good idea to put the light on a mantelpiece, like to make it a little lamp. That's a great idea. And uh, I would just say that um, I would just keep working on this a little bit more, you know, thinking about how you can blend out a little bit more of the lines. Um, sometimes what you have to do when you have dark lines to begin with is you kind of have to go in and lighten the lines a little, like erase at the lines just a tiny bit to remove them and start replacing with value. Um, like right here, even without even removing the lines, you could like maybe work on darkening this side just a little bit more. You know, make sure with your pencil lines too that you're kind of going in different directions like the tutorial talks about. That way you'll get more of a flat, like a dimensional surface. Um, but, you know, thinking about uh, if the light is here, you know, thinking about how this side is probably going to be a little bit darker than you have it. Maybe right in here it's going to be a little bit darker. I definitely think this in here it's going to be lighter and in the front. Um, maybe working a little bit more on your fireplace, you know, just building uh, some dimension in there. Um, I think the table is looking really good here. Your person um, looks good. And... Uh, yeah, maybe um, like when, you know, when you, I like the idea of this sort of circle of light. Think about how you can maybe blend it a little bit more out as you go. You Right, right now you've got like a quite a distinct edge here. And think about how it's going to fade out as it goes. So, you know, you can kind of just use your pencil lines to sort of blend in, you know, as you come in towards the light source just a little bit more. Um in a way, really, I think you've done that right here, where you started to get a really nice sense of blending. I think those are the main things. Yeah, so you're on the right track. Just keep developing it. Um, you know, you can really see in this assignment how once we start adding value, how, how you photograph or scan a drawing and, and then Photoshop it. It start, will start to make really a big difference. You know, you've got quite a lot of a dark um, kind of part of your um, photograph here. Over here it looks a little better. So even really try to work on even lighting when you take your photograph. Uh, have a lot of light in the room. You know, do whatever photoshopping you need just to kind of get it as close to the original as you, you possibly can. Lauren, all right, that's great that you worked on your cast shadows. Yeah, so uh, let's see here. I think you've got a good, you know, you're really, yeah, you're starting to really develop the shadows and thinking about this light source in relation to your sofa. I think you just probably need to keep keep developing it. Um, you know, this cast shadow is looking quite good. For this cast shadow right here, so it's actually going to continue. So if you visualize the light coming down, it's actually going to hit this edge here as well and cast a shadow here. So to find that, all you would need to do, let's just take a color here. So I'm just going to, you know, build this back. Um, you know, the... the, the uh, I'm going to make it see-through right here. Let's just we'll do that here. So we're going to kind of make it see-through so we can see to the other side. Now we can cast this shadow here. And uh, let's just get a different color here. So we're just going to go through the bottom of that bottom point, you know, the bottom point right here, and then go down from the light source to get where it ends. And then that's the point here. So actually, so this shadow, can you see I'm sort of, I'm joining it up there. So it's going to actually fill right in there as well. And when you do that, you'll notice it's going to look a lot more dimensional, the space. So yeah, other than that, you know, just keep, um, I would say add more value. You want to, as the, you know, the video tutorial talks about, you want to have almost everything, you know, maybe... I can't remember what the percentages are, but, you know, you're going to have a small percentage that's black, a small percentage that's white, you know, maybe in terms of white, like maybe some of the areas right around here 
that are closest to the light source that are hitting getting hit directly like right here where you have it um, and then everything else is going to be in this range here so every surface that is not in white or black is going to be shaded a little bit so I would just go through and keep shading it I'm not quite sure what this triangle here is maybe you can make a note of it you know because it's somehow is it the shadow from the sofa if so you know that shadow from the sofa we probably wouldn't see it uh, maybe just the tiniest amount right on the floor but we probably wouldn't see this on the wall right because this is unless the there was no wall um, but because there's a wall it it doesn't it prevents that shadow from fully taking form like like this one does um, okay so that's what I keep doing um, like I've been recommending to other folks you know if you have any situation in your household where you've got a light on like just on a stand like this um, or you know anything like that where you can just sort of examine when the lights on and everything else is dark in the room how it affects the walls and the ceiling that can be very valuable to um, you know just seeing how that light is going to affect you know how the floor how, you know when it starts to move away from the light just in helping putting more of those middle tones in um, hi Yesenia so let's see here I think you mentioned the window with the light coming in. Was this the, the window you're talking about right here? It looks like it, or a mirror. Um, but in any case, yeah. So what you would be doing in that situation, if you, you know, you have your light source here, is you're adding an additional light source. And if you do that, I would just say keep it like like you're doing a very sort of dim light that is not casting shadows or really doing a lot of illumination because working with two light sources is you know double the trouble <laughs> because what happens is you essentially can't have to cast two shadows you know you can uh, see how that works in a room uh, it often happens in the room where I work where there's two light sources, you know, two windows on different walls, and I can look at the ceiling light fixture and see two overlapping cast shadows. They actually overlap each other, but they're two distinct uh, light, sha light um, shadows. So that's the issue with two light sources. So yeah, so go ahead and, and leave the window, but just kind of keep it you know, just a lighter part of the drawing. Maybe it can have a little illumination around it like you've done. Um, okay, otherwise, yeah, otherwise, so this is your light source right here. Yeah, you had the cast shadows here. It looks really good. I like how you've kind of varied the shadows. I think that's this one here. That's a really good idea. Uh, gives it more of a, you know, because when you look at a shadow, it's actually transparent there's a transparency to it so we can sort of see through to the object um, so kind of leaving elements behind uh, underneath it is a good idea for making it look real um, and the corners making those a little darker overall and your your guy here or I think it's a guy but it, your, it could be a genderless character um, looks really good with the kind of way that you have worked with the three-dimensional qualities of it and also just the way you've started moving away from working with um, line and replacing it with shapes of value. Like right here too, you know, this little L area here, it's, it's pretty clear that this is the edge of the mattress, you know, and you've done that just by changing the value very, very slightly. So, um, you know, overall, I think this looks really good. I, if I were to work on this a little bit more, what like what to suggest, I would just say, you know, maybe add a little bit more of the mid-tones. I do think you've got enough of the light and enough of the dark, but maybe, you know, maybe in certain areas, like maybe this wall back here, or you've got the light source here. Well, maybe just kind of, you know, in different areas, you know, keep the white for the um, closest to the light source where the light source is hitting it most directly. And then you can sort of add that, maybe the, some of the these mid-tones in there um, that's it I think you're going in a good direction here Rebecca yeah I'm glad you redid this with the new composition I like this composition it's simple and yet it has uh, a lot of good shapes to work with 
you know basic shapes that are going to be good to work with in terms of um, shading. Um, so I think the thing at this point, the thing that I would, um, and I, I like the little person back here, that's really cute. I think the thing that you want to work with just a little bit more here is thinking about which of these um, points here you're working with, with the shadow, like where the cow shadow is coming from. To me, it looks like it's this one, right? So I would just ignore this as a light source. Like I was mentioning earlier to Yesenia, um, I, having a second light source is really challenging. So I personally think that, you know, this is a basic perspective class, just stick with one light source and you'll find it a lot easier. So having said that, um, I think that this shadow right here, let's just start with your bed. I think you probably really um, cast this. Let's see, so it goes through the top and then we take the top and go down through here. That looks, so that looks good. You did a good job with that. For this one right here, for the table, so let's do that one together. So this is the angle of the shadow. So it's actually going to stop at this line. So let's just pull this all the way over here. And then the top, I'm sorry, this color is not super great for this. But let's just go, you can see that it goes way off to the side here of where it's going to end. So it's actually just going to be shaded in. So this triangle right here where I have not, so you would want to erase this. This, this would, it wouldn't be here. So it'd be in this triangle. And then anything on the wall, you cast directly from the light source. So it just would follow along here. So this is the area you'd shade in. Typically, you know, what you can do is just sort of start, start it darker here and then shade it out, outwards, like fade it away. Um, like the assignment tutorial, the video tutorial talks about. Um, okay, so I think that's the most important thing. Then I would just keep really thinking about your light source in relation to your, oops, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Hold on. In relation to your light source. Make this into a light source, you know, a little lamp or something like that. Um, could be on the wall or standing up. And then think about the light hitting. So it's gonna, this is gonna be the lightest side. This is gonna be darker here because the light's not hitting it. So just like you have here, this is the lighter side. It's gonna be a little darker here. So just keep thinking about that and working on the rest of the, um, the shading. You're doing a little more shading in the rest of the drawing. Uh, let's see, we'll just start with this one. Yeah, this looks good. Nice, uh, simple composition. Um, I think your two point looks very accurate. Nice job with that. And uh, your cast shadows overall are looking really good. This looks good. Um, right here, this looks good right here. So there's, there also will be, there'll be a cast shadow that happens right here, like that's gonna be cast from this. So you just wanna cast that one, you know, just pull this line up, just like exactly how you've done it. Um, so it's going to be, well, actually, actually you do have that. I think it's, I couldn't see it. So there's a tiny little shadow there. Yeah, so just ignore that. Um, okay, uh, let me just ho hold on here. I'm going to get the other one. Okay, okay yeah. So, um, I would say that, yeah, this is like a, a good first draft where you've got the lights and darks plotted in. I would just keep working on it a little bit more, refining things. I'm going to make sure that you have, you know, almost everything is going to be in the gray area, so you're really going to want to shade just a little bit more all of these areas here. And just leave the whites for, for example, like the top of this um, ottoman or whatever the chaise long that's coming out here might be uh, maybe a very light gray. This might be very light, um, but close to white, you know, since it's the light is hitting it. Um, but then, you know, do all of the different parts within the um, sofa. You know, maybe it's going to be a little darker on the top, maybe a little lighter here, a little darker on these edges. You know, just kind of try to really analyze the light source and how it's going to affect all the elements in your drawing. Um, I think that's all you really need to do here is really just come back in and, and spend a little bit more time with it. For your, your 
um, person right here, I would just lighten that up just a little bit more. You give, you know, shake your eraser in there and just try to see if you can create a little more dimension so it stands out against this dark shadow. And when you're shading, you know, really try to shade in multiple directions, like the assignment tutorial talks about, um, because that will create more of a sense of dimension. When you just go in one direction, it tends to flatten things. Um, so just kind of keep keep your pencil moving around. Um, and uh, that's the main thing. Just keep adding more, you know, adding more, looking, you know, standing back from it and continue to develop it. So I'm just going to open yours in Photoshop. Did you see my um, video critique from the last assignment? Um, I gave you some suggestions. I talked really about this one right here. You know, you only needed to do one of these, not both of them. Um, so I might check that out. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to talk about this one again because I think this is a really good direction. So the thing that you needed to add here, though, was your scale figure and your ellipse. Um, you know, I think your scanner is doing a fine job. I just think in Photoshop you need to correct it. And, you know, I think there, if you don't have Photoshop, um, there are other programs online that you could probably... You know, I'm not familiar with them too much, but, you know, you could do a little searching um, for any free software that can do some image editing. There's got to be something out there. I'm thinking Pixlr, maybe, P-I-X-L-R. Um, so I'm just going to grayscale it. Um, you can see that makes a subtle difference, but, you know, it's all about the different, the subtle differences when you're documenting work. So, uh, let's see. I can't remember now. Your light source, I think it was here, right? Um, one of the things that, so I would definitely, okay, so let's, I'm going to just ignore the cast shadows at this point because I think I talked about them in the video critique before and adding the light source. That's really a thing to think, you know, you wanted to do here to indicate that. But I do like the shading style you're working on. I think it looks very sort of subtle and Looks like you've really worked on it in layers, which I think is really a good thing to do with shading is to just go and add. It's almost like you're washing things, getting them darker slowly. I don't know if that's how you did it, but it looks that way. And that way you can get develop these nice um, blended, you know, where you transition from the darker to the lighter, which is what you've been doing, which I think looks really good. Um, so... Uh, I would say you could maybe go a tiny bit darker in places. It's the only thing I could really, uh, one of the main, you know, maybe the main things, maybe in some of these cast shadows here. And then this is your light source here, right? So, you know, this right here, this would be, should be a little darker, this side, just like you've done it here. So just analyzing that light source, making sure you kind of really look at the way that the light is hitting it you know definitely um it's going to be a little so the light source is behind you know it's it's behind it's again almost against that wall and so the front of the sofa would be a little bit darker right because the light's not going to be able to hit it as well and so just kind of thinking again thinking about all of those different parts of the drawing and how that they're going to relate to the light source um, everything that's not really hit directly by the light source is going to be some value here of gray. Okay, I think this is a good start. Again, keep thinking of your light source um, within the drawing, using that to um, just keep developing your, your light and shadow.